When it comes to e-commerce shopping platforms, really there's two options, and that's hosted and self-hosted. Um, I'll explain what those are in a minute. Um, now, within those two options, hosted and self-hosted, really for our purposes, there's two players, Shopify and WooCommerce. Now, within each category, um, there are many other platforms as well. Um, I should just point out that besides hosted and self-hosted, there are, of course, custom shopping cart platforms. Um, but for the purposes of our audience, the majority of who are either not selling online at all or on a marketplace. Um, and the reality is that, you know, with e-commerce today, the vast, vast majority of use cases are going to end up on one of these solutions. So um, within the host and self-hosted options, there are two main players and then a Shopify and WooCommerce. So let's first understand, you know, the need for that each platform is out to fill. And then once we understand that need, that'll make understanding the differences between them a lot simpler. So I think a good analogy to use when thinking about this is comparing, you know, booking a hotel versus building a home, right? When you book a hotel room, all you're looking for is a place to sleep, a place to relax, do business. Um, you know, so your needs are pretty well defined and the solution is already pre-built to meet those needs. Um, you pay for the hotel room as long as you use it, as many nights as you stay there. You can always pay more or less based on the amenities that you want um, or the level of comfort that the hotel provides. Um, but obviously, you're not paying for the construction and maintenance of the hotel. I mean, of course, that's built into to your nightly rate, but you're only paying as long as you use it and according to the level that you use it. Versus when you build a home, so, you know, obviously, there's a lot more that goes into building a home than just having a place to, to sleep or eat, right? That you want it to be a place where you can raise a family. And so there's a lot of preferences that you might have in that regard, how you want your home to look. Um, you want it to be a place where you can express yourself, where you can have a home office. So the point is that, you know, you get to design how your home is going to look according to the functions that you want to use it for and according to your tastes and preferences. Um, but the cost to you is the construction and the maintenance of the home. So when it comes to e-commerce, you know, broadly speaking, it, it, it's quite similar. Um, the vast majority of, of, you know, individuals or businesses that are looking to sell online have the same needs. And Shopify and other hosted providers are providing a solution to those needs, to those common needs. Um, you, want to use that solution so you pay for it as long as you need it in the form of monthly payments you also pay for the solution um according to the level that you use it at so um that you know takes shape in the form of additional plugins that you might be paying for which again you pay for as you use them on a monthly basis um also the um amount of use that you get get out of it um you end up paying for in the form of transaction fees processing fees. So there's a very, very, you know, common set of needs that online sellers have. And this is a solution that I can use um, that meets my need. Um, there can be additional costs to Shopify, such as deploying the site, setting it up, you know, tweaking the design, creating a custom design. Um, in most cases, those should be fairly minimal because again, the concept of Shopify is to meet common existing needs with a solution that I can pay for as I need it. Uh, um, now, increasingly Shopify themselves and their community of developers are looking to expand the use cases that they're able to meet. So, you know, whereas Shopify two years ago, you know, was not necessarily an option for the amount of people that it is today. I mean, it just, it's growing exponentially and vastly. And, you know, that Shopify is one of the most you know, highly funded companies, um, technology sector today. So um, the growth of Shopify is really explosive, but the idea is that, again, creating a solution that meets common existing needs. So we're continuing to expand the types of needs that we're providing a pre-built solution for. Um, so, you know, in a nutshell, Shopify, it's, it's a, they're aiming to be a turnkey product 
that allows you to very quickly and easily uh, build an e-commerce store. Now, WooCommerce, on the other hand, um, is more analogous, 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 one of those, to uh, building your own home, like we said. So um, that is really the need that they're out to fill. So rather than giving you a pre-built solution for your need, they're giving you the tools and a platform to create any type of, uh, of solution. And then that can be, uh, the, the, the possibilities are really infinite. You know, what, what the needs might be and what solution you want to build. So they're providing you tools and a platform, whereas Shopify is providing you essentially a solution. Um, now, just to understand what WooCommerce is, um, you know, for those of you who are completely unfamiliar, so where Shopify is a pre-built, you know, software, so similar to something like Facebook, where you just open an account and you use it, um, WooCommerce is built on, it's a e-commerce plugin for the WordPress CMS platform. So WordPress is the largest um, content management system uh, in the world, something like 30%, up to th close to 30% of websites run on WordPress um, that allows, you know, websites to be designed and developed and deployed and fully managed um, using this completely flexible and open source platform. Now, it was not originally built for e-commerce. Um, WooCommerce is a plugin to that platform which allows you to leverage it for e-commerce. So the reason that you know, WooCommerce and WordPress go together so nicely is because of the open source and flexible nature of the platform. So the technology is able to be um, you know, deployed and scaled and configured really without limit. Um, so the bottom line is that you know, WordPress is a tool and a platform and Shopify is a solution to pre-existing um, to pre-existing needs. Now, WooCommerce does come with a core set of features that would seem to very much provide the same out-of-the-box type of solution that Shopify provides. So you can you know, think that WooCommerce and Shopify are alternatives to each other, like comparing apples to apples. And we've actually had a lot, you know, not a lot, but quite a few people come to us that were great great fits for Shopify, and they actually insisted on going with WooCommerce because of the um, scalability or flexibility, and also because they completely own and control their data and the user experience of the site. As we'll get, we'll, we'll get more into those, those uh, topics. Um, so, you know, WooCommerce can actually be used out of the box because they are providing many of the core e-commerce features that any shop needs needs like, you know, um, cat catalog management, product management, check out flows, user management, um, you know, most of the core things. And then even beyond the core e-commerce function you know, needs that there are, there's a massive marketplace of plugins that can extend your e-commerce store to probably any scenario that you can imagine almost. Um, and WooCommerce themselves, they, you know, has many um, uh, options to extend their, their platform. So, um, it, it can seem that there's a big overlap between WooCommerce and Shopify. WooCommerce says, we'll see, is a little, takes a little more work to deploy, but, um, other, you know, but it's fairly simple out of the box to get up and running. So it would seem that there is an overlap, but it's really important, you know, when choosing a platform to really know your needs. And then with this understanding of what each platform was essentially built for, making the right decision because as we'll you know, discuss making the wrong decision can be really really costly to a business at you know an early stage of um, you know starting their their online selling so um, now you know like I said because WooCommerce is so open and, and, and built to be flexible and built to be used as a tool for creating any type of experience so that naturally means that it requires a lot more setup and um, you know, a lot more maintenance on your end to run than Shopify. Um, now before, you know, so, so now that we understand the, um, the intention of these two, of these two technologies, and you know, this is essentially what's meant by hosted and self-hosted. It's a technical term, but it's also, you know, that's the underlying 
concept is, you know, one is more a solution, existing solution, and one is more meant to be used as a tool. Um, so, you know, we should mention Magento. Magento is, you know, was for many years the dominant player in e-commerce as far as platforms and shopping carts go. It's a massive, you know, robust, powerful platform. Um, some of the biggest sites in the world are powered by Magento. Um, however, over the recent years, Magento has seen their market share shrink tremendously uh, because of Shopify and WooCommerce. And again, that is because the vast majority of um, online sellers, online shops, are you know share a common set of needs, and they're okay using a pre-built solution like Shopify. Um, but even in cases where they might have more custom requirements. WooCommerce is an amazing fit. It does not have the same level of complexity that Magento has. Magento is tremendously complex, both to build and to maintain and to operate also on a daily basis. And so, you know, there's been some discussion in the development in the e-commerce community, whether the complexity of Magento has killed Magento. Um, but Magento is well aware of this. And that's why Magento is actually, you know, moving to really only service very enterprise uh, stores and you know they're focusing a lot on B2B you know companies with multiple storefronts etc but um, even you know the the what your average or lower scale Magento shop um, would have used Magento for WooCommerce is becoming a extremely viable solution now there were limitations with Shopify and with WooCommerce um, with in the, the the space that they were trying to fill, the need that they were trying to fill, right? So Shopify, you know, being not having enough uh, flexibility and um, capabilities for and, and, and you know customization potential for the users, they're really really mitigating any of those issues. And the same thing as WooCommerce, you know, WooCommerce suffered from speed issues just because of the way that the that WordPress databases databases are built. Um, other there were security issues, uh, SEO issues, but those really, really have been mitigated. So there's almost, you know, it's really hard to find a use case where WooCommerce would not be a good alternative to Magento. Um, but again, you know, it does require um, setting it up the right way. Um, so you know, now that we, you know, discussed the solution or the difference between. Um, the Shopify and WooCommerce hosted and self-hosted um, the intention of those platforms. So, you know, we'll look at some of the um, common, you know, issues or differences that that would come up. So, you know, comparing uh, WooCommerce and, and Shopify, there's endless amount of similarities and differences between them. So I'm going to try to focus um, just on the ones that, uh, uh, you know, you would be likely to encounter once you made the decision that uh, was the right platform for you. Um, so first, you know, you could just see right on each platform's homepage exactly how they're positioning themselves. Um, you know, so Shopify coming across very much as ready to go out of the box and WooCommerce positioning themselves as very customizable um, and an e-commerce platform, you know, that you can use however you your business uh, needs. Um, yeah, just to a uh, little uh, plug for our company over here. So we recently got featured in the WooCommerce Showcase. Um, these are sites that were built on WooCommerce that uh, really put you know, WooCommerce to good use, um, something we're obviously very excited about. The company's name is Vilros. And so this is just a good example of you know a company who had custom user experience that they were looking to achieve because of the nature of the products that they were selling and because of the marketing strategies that they were going to use, the content marketing strategies and the resources that they wanted to offer. Um, you know, we'll get more into each of these things. So this was a great fit for WooCommerce and, you know, we deployed it. Our team did a phenomenal job on that end and uh, WooCommerce uh, featured us. So the first, uh, you know, issue that, you'll encounter when um, choosing a platform as a setup. So Shopify, um, you know, is a really, really simple setup. I mean, it's literally within minutes, you're, you're up and running. 
Um, all you have to do is create your account, which is free. Um, initially, there's a trial period. Um, you purchase a domain, you can do it straight through them, or if you already have a domain, you just sync it. You choose your theme, your payment gateway, that's how you want to accept payments, and uh, you can start adding your pro products. Whereas with uh, WooCommerce, so there's a lot more involved in the setup. Now, that does not mean to you know, achieve a basic setup that it's difficult. If you're technically inclined, the likelihood that you, is that you could do this on your own fairly quickly. But well, you know that being said, it it does require more hands-on configuration. So you have to actually host the site itself. Hence the name, host so self-hosted solution. Um, you have to then once you have the hosting, install WordPress. Then you have to install and configure WooCommerce on top of WordPress. Um, you have to then find you know a theme, or if you then you know. Um, likely as you chose WooCommerce because you have something very custom, so you have to create a custom theme and then um, and then implement it onto WooCommerce. And then there's you know all the steps that go into configuring your store, like a payment gateway, the tax calculations, um, you know, order confirmations, all that type of stuff has to all be set up. Um, now again, this does not have to be difficult with WooCommerce. In, in a simple situation, it can be done fairly quickly and easily. But um, the nature of the platform is um, meant to be used as a very, very configurable and flexible tool. And so therefore, um, you know, de facto, you have to go through all these steps. Um, the next, you know, another, so we'll talk a little more about the design because, you know, that's something that's going to happen in the um, setup phase of the project. So Shopify currently has, you know, a very, very large uh, selection of themes to choose from. There's quite a few, I think 10 free themes, and then there's a lot of paid themes, which are not that expensive. And then, you know, there's a marketplace, there are multiple there are marketplaces of themes where you can purchase a design and a layout that fits your needs perfectly. Most of the themes are already mobile responsive, so they'll work on any device that uh, someone, you know, comes to your store through which is uh, becoming more and more crucial, obviously. Um, their th themes, their designs are, you know, created by professional teams that know what works in e-commerce. And so these designs are designed to convert very, very well. They're highly optimized. Additionally, they're coded and developed by teams that, you know, Shopify, um, whether it's Shopify's own team or, you know, teams that they um, manage and, um, and, and and sort of vet or approve. So the, the you know, they're, they're very well coded, very fast, um, work on all devices, like I said. And so basically, you know, going with the Shopify theme, you don't have to think about whether it's optimized, you know, for user experience and, and, and on, the, on the development side. Um, whereas with WooCommerce, so, you know, if you can purchase pre-existing themes and just install them, but again, if you went with WooCommerce because you have some custom need that you're trying to fill, then or, or custom experience you're trying to create, then you know all that that has to be uh, executed very well. Um, so that's as far as setup goes. Um, so the next issue is security. Um, now this again, this used to be a bigger issue and it's mostly mitigated, but it's just something that you need to be more hands-on when it comes to WooCommerce. So Shopify, um, first of all, is PCI compliant um, right out of the gate so that, you know, customers know that the credit cards are totally secure. You can put a seal on your site that says so. Credit card companies, you know, banks know that. So, um, you know, that affects your rates. Um, SSL, which is the uh, site security to protect people's data, is included with Shopify. Um, there's the p possibility to monitor any hacks or vulnerabilities on your data dashboard um, so so really Shopify handles security completely for you right out of the gate and you know again this is in line with Shopify's um, approach and solution which is we'll take care of everything for you you just pay for the use whereas WooCommerce um, you know is meant for you to deploy uh, the way you see fit and so you do have to um, make sure that that everything is in place as far as security goes. Now the WooCommerce is great, you know, 
core code as, as does WordPress. So that um, obviously is important as far as security goes. It's frequently updated. And there's many security plugins that you can use to um, improve your site security. So WooCommerce definitely has tremendous, tremendous, you know, uh, powerful capabilities under the hood to make sure that your site is secure from every angle. Um, it's just up to you to make sure it's being set up the right way. Uh, flexibility. So, you know, this is undoubtedly the biggest, um, you know, benefit to WooCommerce um, and the uh, biggest drawback to Shopify, as we keep saying. Um, Shopify, because they're building a product and a solution that, you know, you can be confident is going to work all the time and the way you need it, therefore they have to tightly control um, their ecosystem. And so therefore they cannot, you know, they won't allow you to, um, manipulate certain things, you know, within, let's say the checkout or, um, you know, any, many other areas of the, of the, uh, site, but it's, you know, the user side of things or the shop side of things. There's also, uh, commonly, uh, complained about limitation, which is a maximum of a hundred variations. So, um, you know, if you're selling products that are complex and they come with, you know, multiple options that users can choose, uh, choose from, this can, you know, this can be an issue you'll bump into. Uh, whereas WooCommerce, you know, has really, really no constraints. Um, there's no limit to what you can build. And, um, and um, you know, obviously there's no issue with the product variations, but um, that being said, you know, you want to make sure that the development of the site is done well so that the site is optimized for speed, for speed and, um, and usability. Um, this is an issue that, you know, many WooCommerce sites bump into, which is they implement, you know, functionalities that are very custom and complex and, and, you know, really creating a very, very unique user experience, but the performance really could suffer as a result. Um, now th just to give you an example of that, so here's a site that we built, which is, um, you know, they're selling tickets to attractions. So every product has a different page template that needs to be, you know, created according to the details of that attraction. Um, choosing your options, you know, the date that you're coming, um, who's, who's going to join you, who's going to purchase the ticket. There's many, many different, you know, variables that go into that on a product level. And so we were able to create a design and, um, management in the back end that really allows our client to set up any possible type of product. And, and there's many details that we were able to incorporate in the checkout flow as well, which were a requirement. Um, there was also, you know, there's many, uh, you know, things we were able to implement once a user checks out, like generating vouchers for attractions. So really limitless, but you want to make sure that you're working with the right developer that you execute things the right way. Um, so cost, you know, it's, it's a little hard to, to, to say an exact cost for a WooCommerce store because, you know, there's so many different scenarios how that might be deployed. Um, it's possible for WooCommerce to, you know, cost less than Shopify, but in the vast majority of cases, um, if, the platform is being used for the right purposes, you know, typically WooCommerce at the end of the day is going to cost you a little bit more. Now it's important to know upfront with the real costs, you know, of Shopify. So you do have your different uh, monthly packages, but you'll see that, you know, once you uh, get to, you know, some more advanced, but still basic, uh, e-commerce functionalities, then right away you're going to be on the uh, $79 package and then, you know, potentially up to the $300 package. There is a uh, enterprise package for, I think it starts at $2,000 a month, um, which provides, you know, tremendous amount of, you know, uh, flexibility and scalability. Um, but that's really, you know, for the very, very, um, robust shops. Um, now, on top of that monthly cost, there's also the transaction fees. 
and the um, processing fees. So, you know, if you use Shopify payments, they're not charging you any of those additional fees. They're just charging you the, um, they're just charging you the, um, the credit card fee. Um, now, with WooCommerce, so you do have to pay for hosting. You do want to have good hosting. And so right away, that's going to basically put you at the same uh, price point um, on a monthly basis. Um, then there's any costs associated with your payment gateway. Um, but then there's additional costs associating with, you know, creating your custom design or finding a premium theme, as well as, as um, any premium plugins that you want to add to your site. Now. As far as plugins go, that's another area to know the true cost of Shopify. Most plugins will charge you on a monthly basis. So um, that can quickly add up as you look to, you know, uh, increase the, the um, complexity of your shop and offer more features. And, you know, many things that are becoming standard in e-commerce that users really enjoy, um, you know, are additional plugins that you'll have to install and pay for on a monthly basis. So, you know, it would not be uncommon to have a Shopify store that's, you know, running at, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars a month. Um, you know, WooCommerce, typically most of the costs are upfront and then you own what you bought. So you might not have those ongoing costs, but typically um, the upfront costs are larger, um, especially if you're talking about more complex custom sites um shopify like i said before the you know you you might if you don't have the time or the capability to set it up yourself you might want to hire someone to do that for you you might have a need to customize the, the uh, theme that you purchased or the design um so there can be an upfront cost but there's a huge um, community and marketplace of Shopify experts that are available to do that you know obviously the range for them varies based on the quality of their work um, so there can be an initial, you know, upfront cost to Shopify as well, but typically that'll uh, run you lower than, than WooCommerce. Um, <clears throat> right. Uh, one more thing. I just want to go back for a minute to talk about the uh, flexibility. So, you know, something that's becoming more and more prevalent in, in e-commerce and being able to compete is creating a very you know, custom branded shop, as well as a unique user experience that's built purely around your product and the way, you know, customers might want to shop for your product. And so the need for a solution like WooCommerce, you know, in a way is actually becoming more common. Now, it's possible that Shopify might have a pre-built solution to your specific need. So that's always worth looking into. But generally speaking, you know, if you're looking to create something uh, out of the box, um, versus something off the shelf, then we're, uh, WooCommerce is going to be the way the way to go. Um, let's keep moving along. Okay. okay, so maintenance. Um, Shopify again, they're giving you a solution that you don't have to you know think about at all. Um, everything's there, already created for you, just to be able to start selling. And so there's really no ongoing hosting or, you know, shop store maintenance that you have to do. Um, they, you know, th that being said, if you're going to be installing different apps, you do want to stay on top of the apps to make sure that they're all functioning properly with your store, that none of them are, you know, have bugs or uh, have any vulnerabilities. Um, and um, so be Beyond, you know, there really not being too much for you to do anything to do with maintenance wise, there's also um, anything you're trying to do with your shop. shop. Shopify has fantastic direct support, you know, call them, email them, chat with them. Um, there's a huge community of Shopify experts out there that can help you as well. And there's also a tremendous amount of resources that Shopify themselves provides or that you can find on the web. So, you know, really, if you don't know anything about, you know, the technology or managing or running a store, um, that's the beauty of the solution that Shopify provides. Whereas WooCommerce, you know, so besides paying for hosting, um, you know, you have to be on top of your hosting to make sure that your site is uh, operating at full capacity. So there are now solutions which are WooCommerce.
Promise Managed Hosting, which um, you know they built these hosting packages specifically for WooCommerce, and so they can optimize you know the way the the servers are set up, and and they'll also be there to you know in case any issues happen, they can quickly go into your WooCommerce store and see what's causing the issue. Um, you know because dealing with custom code and with you know all different plugins. Um, there's, you know, the, the uh, possibility for issues to arise and you have to be able to pinpoint them. Um, but, you know, the shop, WooCommerce also has a tremendous uh, development community. So you can always be very secure knowing that no matter what you built um, down the road, you know, whether you move on, whether you built it yourself or with one team and you're looking to move on, you'll always find someone who can help you. There's tremendous documentation provided directly from WooCommerce, as well as a huge amount of resources online. And typically, you know, any plugins that you purchase, um, they, you know, obviously one of the things to look out for when purchasing a plugin, you know, is the reviews, but you also want to see what type of support is offered, documentation as well. Um, many plugins will, you know, give you the option to purchase, um, you know, higher levels of support. Um, and so, as you know, as far as WooCommerce goes, um, that's also pretty negligible that um, that you should have an issue that you know you'll be really stuck with. Um, so Shalom, look, yes, let's take a quick pause. If anyone wants to just ask some quick Q and A sure. for a second here, um, if anyone just click. There's a Q and A button that should be on your screen if you hover your, over your screen. If anyone wants to quickly shoot a question we could we'll take a quick pause over here right now um, to quickly answer any questions that people might have or the truth is we could ask if anyone wants to ask questions if you want to ask a question raise your hand so this way if anyone raises their hand we'll wait otherwise we'll, we'll go forward so if anyone wants to ask a question quickly raise the hand so we know to wait for you otherwise we will uh, We'll go forward and and we'll 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 pause again at the end. We'll take more questions if anyone wants to ask. I'm looking for the feature that tells you whether people fell asleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, people are engaging. But go ahead, then continue. Okay. Um, yeah. So sh site ownership. Um, you know, because WooCommerce is self-hosted, so you have significantly more control um, and ownership of your data. Um, you own everything. That means, you know, if you want to dig into the database, access the raw data for whatever purposes, marketing purposes, um, you can do that. Um, however, you should know that WooCommerce on its own is a little bit limited in being able to do that again, because of the way uh, it's built. Um, but there are other you know, platforms that are, are available that you can take that data from WooCommerce and then do a lot with it. But as far as having your raw data, um, you're in full control over it. Whereas Shopify, um, they do give you access to your data and they do have actually you know, fantastic reporting capabilities and, and you know, the ability to analyze uh, data um, out of the box. Um, but it's on Shopify servers and they technically are in full control of your data. So, you know, um, now an issue that comes up a lot is um, migration. So um, something happens and you want to move on from Shopify, um, you're, you have to be able to migrate your data away from them. And it's doable, it's possible, but it can be a bit of a hassle, you know, to, to actually get that done and then, you know, migrate it in a, in a way that uh, will work on whatever new platform you're moving to. Um, but again, because of the nature of the two platforms, one being a pre-built solution, which you do not have to, you know, think about the maintenance or building of it at all. Whereas WooCommerce is there for you to use however you want. So therefore one is very you know, closed and one is very open. Um, SEO, um, so, you know, again, as far as limitations or issues relating to SEO, at this point, both have a really, really robust and powerful in what they offer. But again, it comes down to how much setup and, and um, you know, manual work needs to be done on, on your end. So Shopify, um, you know, re they, they really, really um, make it easy to, to start 
to optimize your site for SEO. So for example, generating an automatic sitemap, um, plus giving you many SEO controls, like, um, you know, that, that, that on your own, you can go in and, and continue to um, improve your SEO, like customizing title tags and meta descriptions, URLs. So, Shalom, somebody asked if you could explain SEO a little bit. Sure. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. And what that essentially means is that when someone goes to Google and searches for the product that you're selling, um, you will come up um, higher. So, um, you know, obviously you have to know very well how you plan on, on competing within your marketplace. Okay. Um, but, you know, and what you want to rank for. Um, but, you know, be having that control on a product level to be able to put in that SEO uh, work um, is extremely important. And so Shopify out of the box, um, you know, makes that very simple and easy to do. Um, whereas in WooCommerce, you know, there's definitely a lot more manual configuration that has to be done. So, you know, WooCommerce out of the box is pretty light as far as SEO related features go. Um, the code that WooCommerce uh, is built on is, is actually optimized for SEO. But that being said, in a way, the, the capabilities are potentially more powerful than Shopify because, you know, first of all, there's very robust SEO plugins that you can use. Um, but, you know, because of the open and flexible nature of the platform, you know, any uh, content, types of content um, um, that you want to deploy are, um, you know, extremely easy to incorporate um, for SEO purposes. Now, you know, like I said, WooCommerce is an e-commerce plugin for WordPress. So the likelihood is, you know, you might already have a, a WordPress site that you're running that you want to extend to include e-commerce with. But you also might want to, um, you know, for content marketing purposes, as well as just part of the user experience that you're looking to offer, whether it's resources, articles, um, you know, information about your company um, that you want to present in a very branded way. So you might want to use WordPress as a, as a content management uh, platform anyway. And so, you know, if that's an essential part of the online strategy, then um, then WooCommerce being integrated so tightly with WordPress is a, is a tremendous uh, added benefit. So, you know, the risk. So it really, if we we'll go back to the core um, solutions that, or the core purposes that um, Shopify and WooCommerce uh, were created for and Shopify being a solution, you know, a pre-built solution to common needs and WooCommerce being um, a tool that you can use, you know, to really create any type of, or, or to meet any need or create any type of experience. And so therefore the, 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 the risks involved are directly related. So on Shopify, you know, and, and especially if, you know, you're talking about a shop a store that's just starting out um, and the margins are very, very, uh, you know, small, slim and the uh, capital is, is very limited. So you can't run the risk of hitting a wall and then, you know, now having to, uh, and the money that you spent is essentially lost and now having to go start over um, with WooCommerce. So it's really important to really clarify your needs before choosing a platform and then being 100% certain that it's going to meet your needs now and in the future. Whereas WooCommerce, um, you know, starting off from WooCommerce and, you know, what, in, because you wanted to create something unique and then building that and uh, spending a lot of time and money to create that. Um, and then realizing that the, that the business strategy, you know, the business strategy shifts to something more simple. Um, so again, that's, you know, a very big upfront investment that, um, you know, at a crucial stage that can really go to waste. And so really clarifying your strategy again, before you choose a platform uh, is really, really crucial at an early stage of uh, selling online. Shalom, somebody just posed a question. Um, they sell software that people download uh, 
you know, as, as apps for their computers or for their smartphones. Do these, are these platforms made for that or you need to use something else? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Somebody sells software that people download as okay. opposed to products. So are these platforms for that type of solution or, or not? Well, so, well, okay, so WooCommerce definitely, um, you know, uh, that's a big part of the market share, I believe, is people that are selling digital goods, you know, not physical goods that are downloadable. And, and um, there's a tremendous amount, um, you know, that can be done in order, to, um, in order to create a very custom experience about your you know, specific type of uh, whether it's music or, you know, so be, being able to create, um, you know, a branded experience with previews of music or any other type of media, um, or whether it's a piece of software. So, you know, there's, I believe WooCommerce uh, has a core um, uh, feature that allows you to do that. And there's definitely a lot of plugins that allow you to um, extend that as well. Um, Shopify also, um, has the capability to, to, you know, sell digital downloads. Um, I believe, yeah, and that, that's also, you know, developed by Shopify directly. Um, I can't tell you the exact extent that you'd be able to customize that experience and all the different use cases that it would be, you know, usable for, I would imagine at this point, it's a pretty robust offering. Um, so again, you know, both platforms are able to provide that, um, but WooCommerce, if there's something that, you know, you require a very unique experience in selling those products, WooCommerce uh, would definitely have you covered there. Okay. So you, that's it. That's the end of the uh, presentation. Um, yeah. Um, any other questions, I'll be more than happy to take them. Um, I hope that you know clarified the uh, difference between the platforms. Um, but again, I just want to stress that you know, how important it is to really understand what your strategy is um, for making your shop successful and what your needs are as far as being able to create that shop and then you know, making the decision on the platform. But generally speaking, with the understanding that um, Shopify is you know there to meet existing needs and WooCommerce is there to give you a tool um, to create any type of solution, then, um, you know, that, that, that's very, you know, good guidelines to use before approaching anything. I see I a see, question. Yeah. yeah. SC design. Yeah. Go ahead. Before building a website, you want to test the water, meaning to say if this type of business will work. So before I'm going to be company to build a website, which is the cheapest way to test the market. So, that's a great question and and definitely people are using shopify for that purpose to quickly deploy sites just to validate their ideas um again if there's something that's more custom and unique that you need to have in order to even test the waters um you can do a very fast and simple woocommerce deployment um, but generally speaking in that scenario shopify is the way to go um Shlemy wants to know what is a good contact info for you Okay. I'll, I'll send him your email address. Um, okay, Sterling, I'm selling items that get customized before being shipped. I got a plugin on Shopify. Is it worth or rather do with WooCommerce? So again, it's really about uh, figuring out your needs and seeing if that um, plugin is going to meet your needs. I'm not sure whether you want to give people the opportunity, the the uh, the, uh, but the capability to you know, view their um, design live before purchasing it. Um, but there's definitely plugins that do that with Shopify. Um, however, with WooCommerce, you know, once you're getting into custom products, that's where, uh, that's definitely where people start to really think seriously about WooCommerce. Um, so, you know, definitely, I mean, you might, and you, likely be okay with Shopify, but definitely you want to, you know, really think through the experience you want to give to customers. Like I said, that's becoming more and more important. And then WooCommerce would likely be a fantastic solution. 
Um, do you deal in advertising PPC for my website? How do I get my website out in the world? We do not uh, uh, do advertising with PPC because that's, um, you know, we believe that that's, uh, you know, the marketing that drives traffic to the site and um, the on-site experience, we believe are such unique disciplines and, and really vary so much, um, uh, pro, you know, site to site and industry to industry that it really takes a marketing agency that um, is really on top of the game and the changing, you know, dynamics in the market. There's marketing agencies that specialize in certain verticals and in certain industries, you know, so you might want to look into that. So that's why we chose not to focus on, uh, not to offer SEO or PPC, but we do, you know, continually work with uh, marketing agencies um, as we work on projects. Then typically we'll have clients um, do their own homework about that because uh, that's a, you know, very serious, important decision that has to be made um, really before starting a project. Now, as far as how you get your website out into the world, um, <laughs> you know, that's definitely something a marketing agency will help you with. So obviously, the the ways to do that are tremendously varied. Um, but, you know, I think what SZ Design asked before, you know, if, if you're not yet sure of your marketing strategy and how you're going to compete, um, but you want to put yourself out there quickly and, and cheaply, so then you know, with Shopify, you could already have your store and up and running and you can actually start to learn a lot about your audience and what drives them and then build a marketing strategy with, with the information that you've gleaned. Um, okay, I logged in late. How do you compare Magento to the other comments websites? So like I said, Magento is, you know, really, really becoming relevant only to very, um, to enterprise level sites and they're now focusing a lot on B2B sites. Um, you know, so as far as sites that um, require the level of customization that Magento previously offered WooCommerce at this point is, tip, is usually the most viable solution. The complexity of creating and deploying uh, Magento just doesn't really typically make it worth it. That being said, I mean, there are cases, you know, where Magento is uh, an amazing option. Like, you know, for example, building a marketplace, I'll just show you quickly. Um, you know, this is a a site that we um, that we created um, it's an online marketplace for artists and um, you know as you'll be able to see it's it's you know a really really um, robust and, and complex user experience We're talking about people setting up their own you know little shops within the site and so you know something at this level where you're dealing with hundreds of artists and tens of thousands of customers, you know, that, that would warrant Magento. But other than that, other than that the, um, you know, the flexibility that Magento previously provided is replaced by WooCommerce. And uh, when is it time to go to a full custom website and not use any of the ready platforms? Everything comes down to, you know, the needs of meeting your objectives and, and your strategies for succeeding online. Um, and so, you know, Design at this point, we're talking about standard e-commerce design. First of all, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You don't want to break conventions. Um, there's a reason that things look and work the way that they do because that's what converts. Um, and so you don't want to start from scratch. And not just that, you can pretty much accomplish any uh, style with a pre-existing theme. Um, so, you know, just to go custom for the sake of having a custom design, um, probably not warranted. Um, it's more when it comes to being able to create a custom user experience, which is crucial for you, your, um, for your strategy. So, you know, whether it's uh, brand related, you know, really creating something that that's uh, special and um, brings out your branding so that users really engage with you, whether it's, you know, being able to offer different types of content um, and whether it's the way that the products are, 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 are bought a very custom user experience such as personalized products um, that you know would be the time to go for a custom design um, now that being said you know you still might want to hire someone to uh, take existing templates and modify them um, you know so that can always uh, f hit that sweet spot that you're looking for. Can Shopify WooCommerce be connected to Amazon? Yes, absolutely. I think if you go to shopify.com slash Amazon, I believe, you'll see exactly what they offer. 
And um, this, like I said before, about the limitations that were previously you know, present with the different platforms being mitigated. So this is one of them. Um, with WooCommerce, you know, there, was, there, there used to not be a simple way to do it, where now it's also relatively straightforward. Okay, so this has really been a fantastic session. Before we sign off, Shalom, just please share with everybody again your contact information if anyone wants to reach out to you directly. Sure. So the company name is forward slash. Uh, you can look us up at forward slash ny.com. Uh, my name is Shalom Rubin. I'm the user experience strategist at forward slash. Um, you could reach me at shalom at forward slash ny.com. That's S H O L O M at forward slash ny.com. Um, and, you know, we'll be happy to answer any calls, answer any questions, uh, continue the conversation anytime. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed. We're going to be sending out a survey to hear your feedback um, on behalf of CHYE and the EPI. Well, we'd like to thank all of you for participating and please stay tuned to Mirta Shem. We'll be doing more webinars in the near future. Wishing all of you a wonderful day and tremendous Hatzlacha.